for .NET uh, community for asking me to um, to give a presentation here. Uh, I'm very anxious for it, so uh, I hope that um, you learn something useful. Um, this is some. Um, this is supposed to be a mind-opening presentation because I feel like .NET tools are not anticipated as much as they um, they could probably be, uh, and I just want to um, cover some common conceptions and misconceptions and what are the good use cases for .NET tools. So, uh, just a quick intro. Um, I'm a C Sharp developer with over 10 years, 10 years experience, and I really enjoy working with .NET and uh, everything .NET related. Um, I'm I'm also fond of uh, hearing about. There was recently a .NET on IoT presentation in .NET community, which I attended, and it was um, very interesting. So. Uh, always feel invited to to come and to to listen about interesting .NET stuff. Uh, I've just started working in SoftSurf April this year, and I really enjoy working in the company. And um, hello to everyone who also works at SoftSurf. And I think we're building a, a strong team, and uh, it's good that we have those communities to share knowledge. Um, I besides of .NET, I work with different technologies. I Recently, I had uh, a start with Docker and Kubernetes. I also know front-end technologies. I've also worked with uh, PostGIS, um, geographical information processing uh, on Postgres database. So I like to tinker. I like to try different stuff. And I think it's also always good to, to expand your knowledge. And of course, I like the idea behind .NET tools. I like that uh, the, the .NET development team uh, took time to create it and polish it. And so uh, let's let's start. Um, so this is the short agenda for, for today. First of all, uh, what are .NET tools? Well, <clears throat> they first appeared in .NET Core uh, 2.1. And there were uh, a brand new concept to the platform. Um, uh, they have first party support in .NET CLI. So uh, if you just have the .NET SDK installed, you don't need anything else uh, to use .NET tools. Um, they are distributed via Nougat. So like any other package, right? You, uh, also not, nothing new here. Uh, but as I said, .NET SDK is required to run them. So uh, we'll be talking about use cases in a second. This is not the preferred solution for just distributing um, a user-oriented kind of application. This is geared towards developers. Um, and this is uh, highly influenced by NPM and uh, this sort of uh, tools. Uh, many of you may be familiar with NPM from Node.js ecosystem already. So um, there is uh, some, some sort of uh, executable packages that you can just uh, install and use like uh, any other pro program. And a big advantage of .NET tools is that they are uh, cross-platform uh, by default. So um, they are just plain .NET assemblies and uh, there's no step involved in uh, some native compilation for a dedicated platform. So you don't need to build a Windows version, a Linux version, a Mac OS version. You just publish one Nougat package and on all platforms that um, .NET SDK is available for, um, you can just use them. So. Uh, this is it. This is the gist of it. And some um, pros and cons um, that can be deduced from what I said uh, previously. First of all, they are cross-platform and they don't need a dedicated compilation step for any platform-related stuff. Of course, you could try to break it and have dependency on some um, for example, uh, Windows only libraries, but uh, I think it defeats the point. Secondly, they are 
developer friendly by nature and this can be both a pros or a con but um i think that they are and will always be geared uh, to developers and developers only so if you have any other needs uh, you want to create and distribute a user oriented application then dotnet tools are just not for you uh, there is easy distribution via nuget so nothing new to learn here and no special skills to create a dotnet tool uh, which we're also going to do during this presentation to just create a console application and some um, package it uh, uh, in a defined way and uh, and just install it and use it so learning curve is um, really low but uh, on on the con side uh, .NET SDK is required and as I said um, regular users um, won't probably be interested in using .NET tools because you need to be savvy with uh, command line interfaces and uh, having the .NET SDK installed. Also, um, if the tool relies on a version of the SDK uh, that is uh, not compatible with yours, then you can't use the tool. Like if you have .NET 5 installed, uh, and the tool requires some .NET 6 features, then you would need to first install .NET 6 in order to use the tool. And there are some security concerns because uh, the tools run in full trust and there are no security guarantees whatsoever. So um, potentially um, by using some tool that you, you don't check by yourself, uh, you can introduce some malicious software to your computer or to your development team. So um, this should always be, um, there should be a, a lot of care in uh, choosing what tools to use. Uh, so um, there used not to be any uh, unified way of looking for .NET tools. Currently there is. Uh, there is both .NET tool search command and also on nuget.org there is a filter for .NET tools. So it makes it uh, very uh, straightforward to, to look for packages. And let's just have a quick look at some um, nuggets. So for instance, uh, well, we'll just look everything that there is, like uh, so .NET tools, sort them by downloads, so by popularity. And you can see that there are over 3000 packages that are installable as .NET tools. There's the cake build system, for example, there's the .NET intera uh, interactive, uh, Git version, .NET EF, I believe, uh, most of you may be familiar with uh, um, .NET dump, .NET trace, .NET counters, .NET GC dumps. These are um, tools produced by Microsoft to help analyze performance of applications. Um, so there is really a lot of it. And um, I recommend uh, having a look if you're um, if you want to, uh, to to use some tools. Sorry, guys, uh, do you see my screen and this uh, Nougat page? Yes. 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 OK, because I've lost the green frame uh, around the monitor. But OK, I see it doesn't matter. Uh, and also um, .NET tool search is from the CLI uh, site. Uh, they, they can be uh, easily searched. Uh, and one of the more uh, important parts, which is um, often um, neglected, I believe, is choosing the right installation method, uh, which can be global or local. There is also a um, dedicated folder, so it's almost like global, but um, not in a shared directory. And I'll show you all three of them. 
And this may or may not be important um, depending on the tool and uh, on the team and on the project. So there are some variables to consider. Uh, but it just gets as simple as that. Look for the tool, install and use, and of course, share. So if you discover some useful uh, tool, uh, you should um, just talk about it. Um, I don't know, write a blog post, tweet about it, or just tell your team. And also if uh, you find it useful for a team, maybe you should introduce it into your uh, workflow, into your project. Um, so global installation is the one that is, I believe, most widely used, uh, and it's the, the default used for uh, a lot of uh, blog posts and materials about uh, .NET tools. So they're installed, um, well, global is, um, uh, it works uh, for the current user. So it's not like it's uh, available for the entire uh, machine. So uh, at least last time I checked on Windows, it was uh, for the current user. And um, it goes as far as just specifying minus G or minus minus global. And then uh, the tool is available everywhere because the global.net uh, tool installation path is uh, added to, to the paths on your system. Uh, and it can be invoked without uh, specifying the .net command first. So um, this may or may not be useful for you. And this is just a matter of preference. Uh, and also there is a single global version. So if there is some tool that um, you don't really care about updating and it doesn't do any, um, any work, uh, which is highly your project related, then you just can install it globally and really don't uh, worry about what version it uses. Mm. The custom path installation is a lot like global, but uh, it allows you to have, uh, for example, different version of the tool and different paths. Or um, if you want to really have it um, machine wide accessible, you can just um, uh, install it to some tool path and then have an alias uh, in your um, dot profile, for example, to use this tool path and to have the tools available mm, everywhere on your machine. So this is one use case for it. Um, for testing purposes also, this may be useful, but still it is not in any way bound to, uh, to your project. So you may have one version of the tool and your team colleague might have uh, another version of the tool and you will both be, uh, if you need it for your workflow, then you will both be responsible for installing the tool and for sometimes for ensuring that you use uh, compatible versions. So um, this is not ideal if uh, there is some tool that the project uh, depends on. And this is why uh, there is the, actually the default uh, local installation. Um, it is the, le the least straightforward, but I believe the safest bet uh, because uh, it, uh, um, it requires creating a tool manifest. And this is a file that you uh, keep in version control uh, it also stores the version of the tool being used. Um, and this is great for, uh, um, for projects that rely on some tools, especially when they are being actively developed and change often, then you would most probably uh, require all developers and also the CICD environment to use uh, one specific version and this is what local installation is for. So this is done by not specifying any uh, additional argument, just .NET tool install and package name. <laughs> but it will, um, if there's no tool manifest that 
the .NET CLI, CLI will first instruct you to, uh, to create a manifest. Also, there is a separate uh, restore command to install the packages, uh, install the, the local tools if not installed. And also if the version changes in the manifest, then you will also be prompted to, to restore. So uh, there, is, there are those two additional steps about uh, creating the tool manifest and restoring the tools locally, but it's, um, uh, it, it really isn't a hurdle and uh, it allows um, the entire team to work with the same version of the tool. So um, now it's demo time and we will do it with uh, .NET EF, which is um, one of the more uh, prominent, one of the most used um, .NET tools. So uh, can you see VS Code? Yep, we can. Yeah, we do. Oh, okay, thank you. So currently I don't have this tool installed, so I can neither invoke .NET EF. Oh, I can. Huh, funny. So it must be somewhere in the tree. So I'll just uh, go to my temp folder. Sorry for that. Uh, oh, the wrong shell. Okay, I'll just make a new directory somewhere else. Oh, and um, you can see it's not available, so I didn't install it globally. Uh, also, I can't specify the standalone command because it's not in my path. So now uh, if I do global installation for the start, so .NET tool install globally um, .NET EF. So it wasn't starting version 6.0.8. So now I can either issue .NET EF and so you can see it's here with this lovely unicorn or .NET EF and even if I switch to some um, different directory. For desktop, for instance, then I can still use it. So it's, it's available globally, right? Uh, I don't think it's that important to uh, show the uh, tools path installation because it's, it just requires specifying uh, another path, but we'll take a look at the, uh, at the local installation. So uh, first of all, let's remove the global tool. And if you installed it globally, you need to specify the minus G also. Okay, so it's again, um, not available in any uh, callable form. So uh, now uh, we need to create the manifest, right? .NET new tool manifest. Oh, and sorry, because my uh, VS code is in a different path. So yeah, there's the .config folder and now it has the .NET tools.json file. So this is the tool manifest and it's currently empty. So we'll just now .NET install, tool, uh, .NET tool install, sorry dotnet ef so it's available now in the path uh, well it's available in the project so i can do dotnet ef and it runs with version 6.0.8 the, the same that is in the manifest but i can't use it um, with the the global alias because it's not available in the path 
So if it's installed locally, then it can only be invoked uh, via uh, .NET CLI. What is important now? Well, let's say that um, the version changes, like we can downgrade to 6.0.7. If I try to run it now, uh, okay, I believe I have it installed somewhere else. <laughs> so sorry for that. Uh, oh, and it says <clears throat> that it is uh, not available. So this would also happen if you were to uh, clone a repository and not have the tools restored. So now you need to restore the tools. So it just reach, reaches out to Nugget repository to, 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 download it, to download it. And now it's available once more for, uh, for this project. So, um, what it's um, what it gives us this local installation is ensuring that uh, all the the development environments use the same version. And uh, for uh, for an established tool like um, .NET EF, it may not be as important. But for others that may have API changes or some breaking internal changes. Uh, this may be very uh, important. And also, uh, if you decide um, to use those tools on the CI CD side, then you will also have this option uh, will be used. Um, and uh, if I now, now I have this version 6.0.6, .6, but I can also globally install the latest version of uh, .NET EF. So now if I run it like this, .NET EF, I get 6.0.6 .6 because this is what this project requires. And if I do .NET dash EF, it will be 6.0.6. 0.8. So this is um, a little bit, uh, this can be a little bit, bit misleading at start. And I highly recommend, even though you can technically run your tools without specifying .NET CLI, CLI first, I highly, I highly recommend using this form uh, because then you want um, by mistake, use a version that is not um, supported by our project. And um, uh, the issues it may introduce will be from like comments in your code files that it was generated by this tool version, some version, or there even may be some uh, breaking changes in code generation or uh, anything else that your tool does. So my recommendation is um, first of all to use local tools um, most of the time, uh, especially for any tool that is project related, then it's a must to install it uh, locally uh, and use it uh, in this version. So first specify the .NET CLI and then uh, the tool name. Uh, so that's that wraps it up for the first demo part. Um, I think uh, it can't get any easier than this. And if you have used NPM before, then you should feel right at home because uh, this is vastly um, the same. You just need to memorize some new uh, comments. Um, creating a .NET tool is also a very straightforward uh, task um, because you simply start with a regular .NET console app, uh, configure the project file, and then just uh, .NET pack and publish it. And um, it can be installed by anyone or by your team if it's um, published to a private Nugget repository. So authoring those tools is um, very easy. But um, 
there are some things to consider um, before you even start uh, coding your tool. So if you have an idea for a tool, you should first validate uh, that maybe there is a tool that does the job, or maybe there is a tool that you can extend to do the same job, to, to file a pull request. And uh, I think that .NET Tools is um, a great place to, uh, to get involved in open source, for example, like you might have some specific need for uh, your project. Uh, and there may be a very similar tool that just needs some enhancements to do your task. So you need to ask yourself a question if you want to do it in-house or and let only your developers use it, or maybe you want to uh, contribute to an open source project for uh, for everyone's benefit. So this is uh, this is something to consider. And also, as always, try not to reinvent the wheel. So there are more than 3,000 uh, .NET tools uh, in use today. So there is a big chance that uh, there is a tool for you. Um, secondly, uh, and uh, it reaches back to the, the, the pros and cons uh, slide before, uh, you should think if .NET tool is really the right format uh, for what you're trying to do. And um, Remember, it's very developer oriented. Uh, it requires uh, to have .NET SDK installed. Um, uh, when should you use? I think uh, if you, for example, don't want to write uh, PowerShell or Bash scripts, you feel strong with C Sharp and with console applications. Uh, you have a strong .NET team um and you you want to automate some processes in your team then yeah it's it's a great way because um it's dependency free it only requires the dotnet sdk you can code anything in and reference any nuget package so then it might be for you and yeah who will be using your tool i already covered it it's um it's very developer oriented, and I believe that regular users um, uh, would have uh, troubles using it, just like they usually have with using any CLI tools. Um, and there are some there's some good guidance uh, from my side. I, I believe it's good. First of all, you should try to provide the best CLI experience possible. Uh, because um, it's really no fun using a tool that's, uh, that has some cumbersome syntax for running it. So you should always um, look at some good examples uh, or use some good uh, packages for creating um, uh, CLI-oriented tools. Uh, help should be built in like for any other um, CLI tool. You should just, um, if you run, um, if you run .NET EF, it greets you with this lovely unicorn. It, it's, uh, it states its version and says what versions are available and you can have more help inside. So for database, you can also issue help and there's more help inside for database drop. There's more help inside and some, uh, also uh, you can see that comments are hierarchical here. So you have uh, uh, top level command, then you have some sub command. So actually .NET EF is one of the good examples of, um, of a .NET tool because it has some, um, very good uh, CLI support. Uh, remember that common syntax should be succinct and straightforward. So um, instead of using some uh, very long parameters, you should try to, to keep them short and always have some uh, one letter uh, shortcuts like um, most of uh, the tools and uh, for, for Linux have. Um, 
And uh, remember about return codes and standard streams. <clears throat> I think it's uh, even more important now than ever when we have this unified .NET platform that runs everywhere. And um, Linux users that are um, strong with bash scripting, they won't use your tool uh, if it doesn't support standard input or standard output uh, and doesn't speak uh, reasonable return codes. So uh, always keep that in mind. There are some tools, uh, there are some packages that can help you. There is, uh, for example, system.commandline, which is uh, still in preview, but you can you can use it. There is also a very well, a very good CLI FX package that is uh, specifically designed for authoring new CLI tools. There are also many, many more. And also um, allow yourself to be inspired. So. .NET EF is a good example, but there are many others. And um, just um, if you really need to create a tool, that um, then try to make your users uh, experience the best as you can. Uh, so now it's uh, another demo time and um, we won't be creating anything groundbreaking or um, anything important. It's just to show how um, the tools are created and packaged. So please don't expect a lot here. So we're, we're going back to .NET code. Uh, so a, a starting point is just a console app. I don't know. Silly tool. So <clears throat> this is uh, just as simple as you can go with a command line program, but I think it will be enough for for the purpose of this presentation. So just a simple console application that. Uh, you can .NET run. It's it's really, uh, of course, now uh, if you're planning your tool, uh, you should decide on a uh, on some CLI package and um, create your comments and your help and or your switches and um, the means of taking data in and data out. And so there's really a lot to it. Uh, but now uh, I just want to show you how to um, how to package your application and uh, also how to test it before uh, before being published. So to do it, um, there's actually I believe no template for creating .NET tools. So uh, you need to <clears throat> open your CS Proj and tell it to pack it as tool. And we also have a look at the Nougat package uh, after it's created. There's also tool comment name. Uh, and we'd like to just output it to a subdirectory here. Okay, so just now we .NET packet. And that, that's really it. There is this uh, new package folder. Uh, so we'll, um, we'll try to pick what's inside. So I believe it's common knowledge that Nougat packages are just zip archives in disguise. <laughs> um, so uh, there is this tools subdirectory. And this is um, uh, how this is uh, actually, this package is recognized as um, containing a tool. There is some 
tool settings, which says .NET that its command name is silly tool and its entry point is silly tool.dll. And what is its framework uh, to run it with, uh, which usually will be just uh, what you just uh, saw. And really nothing special here, nothing more than just this tool folder. And new spec, um, so the NuGet specification file, uh, it contains some properties um, copied from our project. Yeah, so it also says that package type is .NET tool. So this is another um, means of knowing that it actually contains a .NET tool. Uh, and uh, you could, of course, publish it to, um, to Nugget repository, but we're just going to uh, to use it locally. So we'll add um, this new package folder as our package source and install it from there. So let's just do .NET tool install globally and at source and our source will be this folder and we'll install silly tool and it's here silly tool version 1.0.0 so let's just try it silly tool Okay, perhaps I should um, restart my terminal for it to work. Oh, it doesn't. Funny. Uh, sorry for that. Because it said it was installed. So this is the presentation magic, uh, as it always happens. You, you move, move the dash between yeah. CD and tool. Ah, yeah, you're right, because this was the executable name that I specified. Ah, thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, and of course you can... Um, no, not this way. Uh, okay, because it was not uh, locally. So, but um, the gist of it is that um, there is no special uh, knowledge or requirements or framework or SDK uh, needed to author .NET tools. So these are just your plain uh, .NET executables, which are cross-platform by nature. And um, you can really create everything you want. There are so many uh, tools. Some are very silly. Uh, well, our was extremely silly, but let's just say .NET install minus G um, dot say it was or bot say. Uh, yeah. How do I run bot say? I'll probably just give it a string. Oh, ah, and here is uh, something interesting that we discover accidentally that you see uh, .NET Core up 2.2.0 is required. And I have only these versions of .NET SDK. So this is also something to Keep in mind that they are framework dependent. So, and it's actually very good that we uh, uh, we stumbled upon it because uh, it just goes to show that um, uh, sometimes um, when you have dependency on some external tool, then it will it may be dragging some different version of uh, .NET uh, SDK behind. So, so keep that in mind. And also there is, um, there is a way of uh, knowing or of checking what tools uh, are installed on your machine. 
this is my cheat sheet. <laughs> um, oh, but it doesn't cover it, but never mind. Uh, .NET tool. There is list, I believe. Yeah, so list shows you the tools that you have uh, installed, either locally or globally. Oh, not this way. So order matters. And so, for instance, I have .NET Kause installed. So I believe this one should run. Let's try. No, it's also framework dependent. So, but I have Microsoft Tire, for example, which is a, a way of um, orchestrating several uh, .NET projects and with, uh, with support for Docker. So I have Tire installed and it's compatible with my framework version and uh, it works just uh, great. So um, I believe it covers my presentation. So uh, uh, it wasn't meant to be groundbreaking, uh, but I hope that you uh, had a chance to learn something along the way. And should you have any questions, then we still have some time. Uh, go ahead, please. No questions. Okay, that happens too. <laughs> <laughs>